Hi there. Today we're going to show you how to do some slicing for the Wanhao D7. I haven't done many resin prints myself and it's something I've been playing with the last little while and we'd like to show you what I've learned. Okay, so I've gone on Thingiverse and I found a Viking model. In this case, the model itself already has the supports uh, in place as part of the STL, and it's been optimized for resin printing. What optimized means is that it's been hollowed out, and in this case, it's also had the supports built in, and it's also got uh, two holes to allow the uncured resin to drain out from inside the hollow model. So by default, when you download a model off of Thingiverse, it's solid, and then in Cura, or what have you, you'll set your infill percentage to say 25%. By default, when you're resin printing, it will actually print it solid. And resin being expensive, that's wasteful and costly. So that's why we want to hollow out our models. Unfortunately, Creation Workshop, which the D7 comes with, does not have any options to hollow it out. I understand the new version does, but it's also not free. Um, so you would do that in something like Mesh Mixer or, or other software. In our case, it's a lot easier. Um, it's been done for us. So with supports, you need to be cautious of creating islands. It's kind of the same thing as with FDM printing. You can't just be extruding plastic into midair. You need to make sure that those points are supported. So I'll go over as we slice how to look for islands, and that will help inform where you need to place the supports. So we've inserted the model. Uh, we know it fits because there's no red here. So first, let's save this. I'll just throw it on the desktop, and I'll call it Viking 2. Okay, so what's important to note is you hit save at the beginning before you've done the slicing. Don't hit save after you do the slicing. Uh, it will actually wipe out your slice. I found that out the hard way. So this little slice button here is, is what we'll press to do the slicing options. Um, really, it's just setting your, your slicing profile. So these profiles, if we go back to configure, we've got our machine configuration, which is already set for us in the Wanhao provided creation workshop. And then the slicing profile, I'm using the Wanha Orange, which there's already a resin profile for that. So I've selected that, I've selected 100 microns, and it's automatically selected the cure times for each layer. So the bottom layers typically have a much large, large, longer uh, cure time uh, to make sure that they're properly bound um, to the print surface or the build plate. And then each additional layer after the first five in this case, five base layers, uh, will just be 15 seconds of cure time. Um, so we don't need to do anything other than make sure that we've got our, our resin selected here. And then other resins like MonoCure, they actually have um, a profile built into here, but they on their website have a cheat sheet specifically for the D7 uh, describing uh, what settings they feel is optimal for their different resins. So I would look at those if you were using those resins instead. So back to the 3D view, we're ready to slice. So let's hit slice and we'll do 100 microns. Slice. So being that this is a large detailed model, this will take some time. While this is going, I'll flip over to B9 Creator. So in B9 Creator, I've imported the STL file. And it looks exactly the same as it did. Uh, and I want to say, add some supports manually. So flip over the supports tab. And by default, it will actually raise the uh, model off the bed five millimeters. Um, in our case, this model has been designed with it being on the bed. So we want to undo that. So I'll just change this five millimeters to zero, apply. Here we go. I think it's probably gonna fight me and move it back. Okay. So let's pretend that uh, at, on the edge of this um, sword here that I needed to place a support because it was going to create an island. So what I'll do is go supports. I'm gonna do a light support, make sure that I'm on add mode here. And I'm gonna choose that point right there. There we go. So that's created kind of a cone-tipped support. And you can see it's kind of on a 45 degree off this little stick. So we can also modify 
properties of you know the very tip of this support for example so if I go to modify and choose that support you can do things like change the top of the support which is this piece you can change to say the radius of the cone for example um, so maybe I want to have a more fine cone tip you know that may not be adequate support but you can do that um, you can also make it straight so that it'll actually just be vertical and then you'd need to make sure that it doesn't contact any of the other surfaces you know which would mar the finish um, so that's kind of what you would do as far as adding these supports and these, these supports that have been added in here very well may have been added using B9 Creator, I'm not exactly sure. So if we look at it from the top, we can do something called X-ray vision, which is what they call it in here. And this kind of gives you an idea of how it would be printed layer by layer, right? So we can see we've got kind of the, the floor, the base. Oops, there we go, base. And inside the base, it's hollow, so there's these little stick supports. And then there's the top of the base, and now we're at his feet. And so as we move up, we're going to come up to the cape eventually. Those little circles are the supports themselves that have been added in. I'm just going to try to find the bottom of this cape. Perfect. Okay, so right here, this is obviously the support. And the reason that support is placed there is because we can see an island forming here. So one little piece of the back of this cape would have been floating in midair and not bound to anything um, that would just cause a, a mess inside your printer and your print would fail um, so as we go further up we can see there the cape kind of fleshing out but it starts as just an island in that back corner so the on the on the left side here we can see it's actually attached to the boot so it doesn't actually need any support um, so you would kind of go through your model bit by bit and make sure that there are no islands created and add supports in those spots. Unlike um, FDM printing, the, the angle um, that you're printing at isn't as much of a concern. Um, so let's get rid of this x-ray vision. There we go. So, you know, kind of the rule of thumb is 45 degrees or maybe 65, anywhere in that range. You'll be able to print on an FDM printer without any supports. Um, and as you get higher in the angle, you'll end up with a varying um, quality of the surface finish um, or even a little drooping. But on resin printers, you can handle much greater, steeper angles uh, with very little issue. So, um, like I said, it's not really the angles you're worried about, it's, it's the island effect, if you will. Let's flip back here. Oops. It's still going. This definitely takes a while. We'll be back in a second. Okay, so that took a while, um, but we're back. And now that it's done, we can flip over into slice view. And this, much like the X-ray vision we were using in B9 Creator, shows you layer by layer what will be cured. What's going to be shown on the LCD. The white areas will be where the UV light is allowed to pass through, and it will cure a layer of resin 100 microns thick in this case. So as we go up, we can see the supports in the base. There's the top of the base and his feet. And we can make sure that there's no islands created here as well. Obviously it's exactly the same model, so there wouldn't be any islands created. But this is another method you could use to go through and make sure that everything is supported and it's not printing in midair. So as an example right here, here's a support. And in a moment, we're gonna see, I think it's maybe the edge of the sword. I'm not exactly sure, but as we go up further. Yeah. Even then, this may have been a little bit of an island. So that may end up, be, that may end up uh, floating around in my resin vat at the very end, that little piece, depending on how lucky we get here. But you can see the rest of it is, is then supported, so at this point it would be fine. Um, but it's, it's tricky. This is one of the things that I, I definitely spent a lot of time kind of struggling with. Um, so, as I said, don't hit save after you've done the slicing. When you're doing the slicing, on the desktop here, here's our Viking 2, 
you would see kind of temp files created and then disappear and then created and disappear for, for almost every layer that would happen. This CWS file, um, that was created because uh, in our other video where we showed you kind of your first print on your D7, when you configure your slicing profile, make sure that export to CWS is selected um, because we are going to save this file onto a USB stick and plop it in the back of the printer. Uh, this CWS file is essentially a zip file. And in our case here, it's 97 megs or so. Um, so if I open this with say 7-zip, I can see the contents of the file. Um, so there's the G-code, all these little image files, which are kind of every layer. And I think because we did 100 microns, it's about 1200 images or so. And then the original STL file. This STL file is not required uh, to be in the CWS um, for printing, at least on the D7. And in this case, it makes the file so large that the D7, at least mine, would not even print the, uh, it wouldn't properly load. So on the screen, you would see it load the file and it would say how many layers it is. It would say zero of zero layers. Um, so it didn't properly load. And through trial and error, I found that it was just simply too large. So deleting that STL file out of the CWS file, which is really just a zip, um, allows this to print uh, perfectly. So save this to a USB stick and let's throw it in the printer. So we've already loaded the printer up with the Wanhao orange resin and we've leveled the base plate, which you do by loosening two screws on either side, lowering it down and then tightening those up as it's firm against the, uh, the film on the bottom of the vat. Uh, when doing so, we always have eye protection and gloves. You don't want to get uncured resin on you. Um, but since we're done that, I don't have any PPE right now. Let's throw the lid on top of there. Because that shouldn't be exposed for any longer than is necessary. And let's just home the Z. So utilities, Z height, and we'll just hit the home button. So that will slowly lower back into the vat. Exiting back out to the main menu, we'll go to print. We'll hit this little plus icon and we'll choose Viking 2, which is the one we just did, hit the check mark, and that will say waiting, and it will load, and eventually it will say how many layers there is, uh, the name of the model, and the print time there will, will all update. So it's worth mentioning that although I had issues previously and had to remove the STL from the CWS file, um, today it seems to have worked. So that may not be necessary, but it was necessary for me previously. There we go. So it's loaded up. It's 1,261 layers, which corresponds to how many layers it showed us when it was doing the slicing in Creation Workshop. And then we'll just hit go. And we'll come back in a little while and see what it creates. Well, here we have it. It's already fully cured. So we removed this from the base plate. It came out upside down, of course. Pried this off and allowed the resin to drain out of the two holes into the vat, save that for future use. And then we took this and dunk it in 99% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol. And ideally you would dunk it in a second fresh container of 99% isopropyl uh, to get any further residue off. Then give it a wash in water and uh, throw it under a UV light source. So in our case, we just threw it outside in the bright sun, but you could use like a nail curing little UV light hood thing. Um, I've seen those on eBay. In my case, I didn't use the second fresh um, clean uh, isopropyl vat. So there is some residue in here uh, from the white monocure uh, resin that I was using previously on other prints. So my first vat is rather dirty. It's just kind of a quick wash. And then that's why you have the second clean vat um, to dunk it in. So there's a little bit of white residue. This is getting painted anyway, so we won't see that. And for fun, I printed another one at about 10% scale or so. Um, and you can still see every little detail in the back of his shield. Uh, you can even make out his eyes um, and the little nose piece here. Um, it'll be difficult to print that or to paint that, sorry. This will be much more manageable. Anyway, hopefully you found that useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more content and leave a comment down below and let us know what else you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.